I needed money. I had a scholarship to school, but I sold encyclopedias. And I think the sales skills of being an encyclopedia salesperson carried me to great successes later on. Oh, in life. priceless education. <laughs> if I could right now, I would make it mandatory for every one of my children to sell encyclopedias door to door. I'd have them out there door to door, no leads, because it's the best experience in the world. It t teaches you how to overcome rejection and not let it get it to you. Yeah. And that's it, very important. And to that matter, you know, not quitting as I look through your entire career mm -hmm. is a stealth of what you do. Like you just, it's not just taking no and turning it into a yes. It's when you were down and out, mm -hmm. you, you know, several times in your life, Correct. you slept in your car, you didn't let it bother you at any time. You simply looked and put faith into what you wanted. Where did that philosophy come to, from? Because it's not normal. <laughs> it's interesting you would ask that question. It goes all the way back to selling encyclopedias. In my early 20s, being able to sell them door to door with no leads, you're just pounding on doors, is one of the greatest experiences in the world. Because you can knock on it, which I did when I started out, 50, 80, 100 doors that they say no or close it in your face. You have to be just as enthusiastic to overcome rejection, knowing that if you keep on going, and be just as enthusiastic. That's the thing. Be just as enthusiastic on the next door and look what's going on in front of you, not behind you, because you can't change yesterday's newspaper. So when you're down and out or on top of the world, you can't go backwards. Look, what's the next step? Okay, I'm in my car sleeping. I gotta eat. Where am I gonna get the food? Where am I gonna get the money? You look <laughs> at what the next step is instead of drowning yourself in the past, and that's been a big help. Going back to the encyclopedia days, I know there were times at nine o'clock at night, and that's late. We're doing appointments, I have no orders in my pocket, I need the money, it's uh, it's commission only. Yep. And I'm still knocking on doors at nine in the, at night. And sometimes they'll let you in, sometimes they won't. But occasionally I'll get in and get an order. In the back of my head is when the going's tough, the tough get going. When the going's tough, the tough get going. Is there a strategy that you've had to be able to cross industries and build companies? There certainly is. And my philosophy is this, and the strategy is, and I did it with Paul Mitchell, even though our backer pulled out and had to live in my car, but it was okay, <laughs> is this. Two things, one, be, and I say it to entrepreneurs a lot, be prepared for a lot of rejection, number one, because then it doesn't let you down. You know it's gonna come, you continue on. The second thing, and it had to do with Paul Mitchell and Patron and now Rocket, is make sure your product or your service is the best there is. You don't want to be in the selling business. You want to be in the reorder business. So with Paul Mitchell, it had to be a product so good that hair stylists who know more about hair than anybody else, and that's all we sell to. If you ever see Paul Mitchell in a drugstore or supermarket, it's black market, counterfeit, or out the back door. We don't sell it to them. Right. So hairdressers have to have something so good that they could recommend it to their customers in between visit. Patron, the same thing. The United States needed an ultra premium tequila. We didn't have one. And I thought, by gosh, we need it. It'll take a while to build it. It's twice as expensive. Actually, I think we are five times as expensive as regular tequilas. But we stuck with it, knowing that eventually it's gonna take off. Well, little did we know that Paul Mitchell become probably the largest privately owned salon hair care company in the world, Patron, needless to say, number one ultra premium tequila beyond what the world's ever known. In fact, it was valued last year at more than two times what the most expensive spirit company ever sold for. But we had the great quality there that people loved the quality. They wanted to reorder it. Paul Mitchell, they wanted to reorder it, not just buy it.